Bringing a tank to a gunfight, here's a look at the new Hasbro Avengers Endgame, Marvel's War Machine. James Rhodey Rhodes gears up in an advanced weapon suit to become the War Machine. I managed to pick up War Machine along with a couple of other figures from my local Walmart. Just FYI though, if you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, you should start seeing them surface at Targets, Walmarts, and even if you luck out, you may even have still a Toys R Us in your area. I'm sorry for people that don't. But just FYI, all the Endgame stuff is now starting to hit store shelves. Uh, FYI also, if in case you were wondering how tall War Machine stands, the Ultra Measuretron tells us that we're looking at a figure just a little over six inches. It could very well be a six inch tall figure. I might have just missed the mark slightly. Nonetheless, though, I'm going to tell you what I'm looking at here. And what I'm looking at here is a 6.1 inch tall War Machine. What I would also be looking at, if I switch this over quickly to centimeters, I'd be looking at a figure that's about 15.7, a little over 15 and a half centimeters tall. As I said, I did pick up a bunch of these at my local Walmart, and uh, just for comparisons, based on the only one I really have done a review for just this far, here he is next to the Hulk. I don't know if this is proper scale. I mean, obviously, Hulk is a lot taller. I can't also help but notice that Hulk's foot does stick out, almost as if he wants to start tapping. I guess you would have to move the foot a little bit further back. So in that sense, even though I didn't really mention it in the review, maybe I guess you could consider that pre-posed because his foot wants to look like it's tapping. But nonetheless, even though they are the same height in figure form, you gotta believe they're not gonna be the same height in the movie. Here are the accessories that come included with the War Machine. He comes with a turret gun, and actually a much larger mini gun, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, all of these look like they're molded in a rather unique color, kind of like a bluish gray. Based on all the artwork and marketing posters and images I've seen of War Machine, it kind of depicts the character more so gray, but Hasbro Alt opted to instead go with almost a color you would expect to see surface for Transformer. Uh, it does have a peg on the bottom here, so there's a couple of different places that you can put it. To their, actually, to their credit, they put a lot of the little points on the figure in which you can put the various accessories. I say various, two accessories. Sort of the same thing that they've also done with Transformers. Okay, so if you want to, say, attach it, uh, default it for me, I would probably likely attach it to the top of his shoulder. And again, I don't want to do a comparison back and forth with like a lot of the promotional artwork, but I feel like the cannon sits on this side, not on this side here. There's also a couple of connector points too. There's one on the back, you can attach it right there. Sits a little looser, but it still plugs into place. And then there's one on the one arm, right there. And flip it around, onto the other side, there's one on this arm as well. So come again, a couple of different variations if you want to display War Machine in two of the weapons that of course he comes included with. The other one, Get a, go, get a gander at this. This looks like something I would see from like a vintage G.I. Joe. This would fire missiles out the front. But it kind of looks like, like a minigun turret. Something that no other person could really be able to wield unless you had like a, a robotic suit like a war machine does. Now this does have a few little connecting point options as well. Once again, like before we look at that, just want to show you what this looks like up close and personal. It's a nice molding, I must admit, to it. To it, Unfortunately, it doesn't have any other coloring. I mean, it's just all relegated to the same sort of bluish gray. There's this section right here, which I guess you could argue the point is a little bit of a different color than the rest of the minigun, but still, it's sort of molded the exact same way in this same coloring of plastic. Okay, so if you guys wanted to attach this, it does in theory, and it's a very tight fit, but it, in theory it does peg into his shoulder, but not much. And as you can see, it does really want to rub against the shoulder, ultimately just popping it off in the process. If they had only, if they had only taken this part off and smoothed this down, you may be in theory be able to attach this to the side of his shoulder. The other option as well is we've looked at the back. That also has a struggling point of getting that in place. So 
This is kind of ruled out. This is sort of ruled out. You can, however, still attach it to his arms. That's one good thing at least. And if you bring this around, I actually really thought this should have been longer so it could fit around his hand. So it would actually look like he was holding the handle and then it was also attached to his arm. No such luck right there. And like the other one, it does attach on this side too. So if you wanted to have it on either or, you can attach it. You can only imagine, I mean, I know, I get it, these guys are wearing suits and all, but you can only imagine, like, there's still joints and arms and muscles working underneath this. Uh, suits or not, you can imagine these would be pretty heavy to be wielding around. Not to mention as well, these guys, these poor guys are going to be walking around in these suits. Their legs must be tiring. Anyways me talking about all these other things uh, there's also this little trigger point right here so in theory you could also attach this as the handle to the gun and he can wield it like this kind of this giant cannon that's kind of the deal breaker right there I would call this the deal breaker you can also go ahead and take that handle that we had looked at before this is sort of makes it a little bit awkward but you can kind of also hold it as if he's holding it like a briefcase. Now that's a pretty heavily fire-powered briefcase, but you can also have him wielding it like that as well. So like I said, there's, there's a connector point on the end. It really doesn't work up here, and it certainly doesn't work on the back here, but at least you can attach it to his arms. So again, there's a couple of different options available. I think when it's all said and done, likely I'll just put the cannon the little shoulder cannon their gun on the top plug it into place because that's very much a familiar area for a war machine to be having that i don't even know what i would do with this like maybe i guess i would just put it in his hand like this i don't really like having him holding it by this handle just because again it seems like that's not something he would be possibly wielding i feel like having this mounted ideally having it mounted underneath his arm like this is like the most logical step but again, I just wish this this was just a little longer. If it was only a little bit longer, you just kind of pry it in place. But it does ultimately, in the process of doing so, pull this out of its peg. So, it, you know, depending on how you want to have it displayed. Okay, so I think we've spent a fair enough amount of time talking about these. We can just put those to the side. Let's have a look at the war machine, which actually as a whole looks pretty good. We don't really get too many war machines, and thank goodness with now Rhodey kind of getting a little bit more exposure, kind of like the Hulk, eh? Very little, very little attention spent on either one of them in Infinity War. But it's nice to see what we're getting kind of Rhodey back in his more traditional looking outfit here. Though it is, certainly is an upgrade to the previous war machines that we had looked at before. A little bit more streamlined, a little less bulky. It does look good. Again, I don't know the coloring, why they opted to go with like this blue, where it really does seem like from everything I've seen, the coloring for War Machine is rather more dark gray, kind of like a, kind of like a cobalt. I don't know if cobalt is a gray. I don't know. It does kind of look more like a dark gray than it does a blue. Nonetheless, they did go with the blue. Some silver accents there as well. You've got the arc reactor there in the middle on the red. I love the fact that in like the promotional artwork, all of these little areas light up. A very like hauntingly red, uh, bright white, a uh, bright red light, I should say. He's also got the red lights that would be projecting out from his front uh, faceplate. Um, there's not really, again, kind of like the same thing with Hulk. There's no real color to speak of on the back. Um, there is a little bit of silver, so I'll give it that. There's some silver placements put on the biceps and the lower leg, lower ends of the legs. Now, these ones are normally, again, culprits for the fact that, yeah, you do have posability in the arms, but really little to speak of when it comes to the lower legs. Uh, War Machine is really no exception. The thing is about War Machine is, while he seems a little bit more, certainly, limber here on the top, uh, the fact that his legs don't have any posability whatsoever, his knees certainly don't have any posability whatsoever in them, they sort of, from a distance, kind of look like Lego bricks. Very big, bulky things that you really can't do anything with. Sure, of course, you can have always move the legs forward. Those legs move forward. And there's always seems to be that same stopping point. I say always seems. We've only looked at two figures. But so far, I've noticed that all of them have the stopping square behind, saying, no, no, you're not moving any bit further past that point, legs. No way. That's as far back as you're going to go. Actually, while we're all also on the topic of this, let's talk about the rest of this guy's posability. Now, his head rotates all the way around. 
it does stop, kind of gets stuck against the side of the shoulder armor there. But, uh, you know, you can kind of just push forward, push on, and eventually that head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and rocks back and forth. All the benefits of it being a ball joint. Uh, as for the shoulders, while they're not necessarily ball joints, they're more like pin joints, the hinge joints allow the arms to move out, they allow the arms to rotate all the way around, and then he's got single hinge joints in the elbow. But it doesn't stop right there, Jack. Can I, can I call you Jack? Thank you. The hands rotate, or the arms rotate all the way around, and sadly, no posability in the hands, so just in the forearms. Um, as you could probably guess it, you can pretty much look at this and know there's no posability to speak of. Um, the torso is completely one solid brick of plastic. The legs move forward, and as we've already discussed, sadly there's that stopping point, this square behind of War Machine, not to continue to bring to everyone's attention the square behinds of these heroes, but it does uh, pretty much limit being able to move the legs further back. And War Machine, like the Hulk, has peg points on the undersides of his feet. Not a bad looking figure. Let's go ahead, you know what, let's finish this up on a high. We'll attach these. There we go. And attach this. It's so grossly large. Doesn't even really quite fit into the proper... No, it does Let's try the other side. Let's try the other side. Let's go out on a high here. Attach that into his arm. There's no way. Yeah, I mean, suit or not, there'd be no way that War Machine would be able to wield a weapon so large. But nonetheless, not a bad, like I said, looking figure. It's just a shame, though, that with these basic class figures, while you're getting a whole lot of entertainment happening up the top here with fully posable figures, they're sort of a bit like bricks when it comes to like the rest of their bodies, moving their legs only in standard swivels. At the very least, I would have loved if these guys could have had a split leg. But then you'd, of course, have the problem that when you start asking for one thing, it sort of snowballs for the rest of it. You know, to get split on the legs, you would want to, of course, have hinges in the knees. And Hasbro just ultimately keeps a figure with a standard swiveled legs. And that's what you're going to be getting for the basic class figures. War Machine turned out to be a decent figure, though of course he does have some of the limitations that one would expect by now to come with a lot of these basic class figures. Posable, really posable from the waist up, not so much from the waist down. He's got some great coloring, the silvers, and kind of this weird sort of silver blue that, again, I don't see anywhere else on promo images. Usually, again, really dark grays being used for War Machine. They instead went with something I would, again, almost expect to find with a Transformer. I love the weapons. I kind of wish the larger gun could have been better incorporated into his suit. Because at the end of the day, and in certainly in final looks, this is probably the way I'm going to be displaying the figure, with him holding that handle. No, not the handle underneath, where it looks like he's holding a giant cannon, but instead kind of holding this in a natural enough way where it looks like he would be having a minigun. Again, kind of wish it could have actually pegged to his arms properly. It just kind of wants to pop off all the time. Now, there is also an Iron Man. As far as I know, the Iron Man is in the Quantum Realm suits. I don't know if we're going to be getting a straight Iron Man, in the regular basic class figures. Certainly as we've seen here in, well, we've seen images of War Machine in the quantum suits. I don't know why specifically we're getting this War Machine without this suit, but maybe we'll also get one down the road that also will have the same familiar color scheme as the Hulk. Really to War Machine's credits, even though the coloring does seem slightly off, to his credit, at least he's not wearing the quantum suit. So it sort of breaks up what could very well be an entire field of quantum suit, suit released figures. Again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself or the Hulk that we already had a look at, price point on these here in Canada are about $14. If I sort of backtrack Quentin Tarantino that back, you're probably looking at a figure that's around $10. Maybe uh, just double check and just confirm that for me. Maybe about ten dollars in the states and overseas will probably be a little bit around, a little around our price point. I'm always curious as to how much these figures cost. So if you guys have seen these figures in your local stores, let me know down below what the price is, what the going rate is for these. Sometimes I get comments and questions from you, the viewers, where you would like me to mention more frequently how much these figures cost. Well, the only problem with that is. 
Well, I'm more than happy to oblige and provide you guys the necessary 411 on the prices for a lot of these figures. That really only benefits you if you live in Canada. If you live in like Alaska, if I tell you something is $14.99, which is probably, I think, what at the end of the day, what the price was I paid for these, uh, $14.99 may not even help you if you're living in somewhere like Alaska. I just used Alaska as an example. So let me know down below if you saw these figures, which are currently now hitting store shelves, what you are seeing the price point for these. I'm always curious to kind of discuss with people from all around the world. And if you also are new to this channel, whether you're around the world or if you're living in Canada, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more end game reviews gonna have a whole ton of them coming your way. More end game reviews are going to be coming your way as well as some other stuff too. So if you're not into Avengers stuff as much as say I am, don't worry, there's going to be some other non-Avengers reviews coming to this channel as well. A whole lot of mixture. I like to keep a buffet table full of different things that you can pick and pull from. Fill up your plate and come and sit down and enjoy your meal. That's what I like to do on this channel. I'm a buffet of reviews. Speaking of buffets of reviews, my friends and colleagues of the mob, more of the buffet will be coming soon. I should put that on a t-shirt. More buffet will be coming soon. Stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.